पेज नाइन्टी नाइन चैप्टर थ्री सब टाइटलिंग द पर्पज ऑफ सब टाइटलिंग इज टू कन्वे द मेन आइडिया और थीम ऑफ ईच सेक्शन ऑफ अ लॉन्ग पीस ऑफ राइटिंग इट हेल्प्स द रीडर नो एट अ ग्लांस द सब टॉपिक्स दैट आर बींग एड्रेस्ड गिविंग स्विटेबल सब टाइटल्स हेल्प ब्रेक द मोनाटनी ऑफ रीडिंग लॉन्ग पैसेजेस रीड द न्यूज पेपर आर्टिकल गिवन बिलो एंड डू द टास्क दैट फॉलो A new deal for old cities. The example of Curitiba in Brazil, which has attracted global attention for innovative urban plans using low-cost technologies, shows that inclusive development models for urban renewal are workable. Many cities in India accurately mirror Friedrich Engels' description of urban centers in 19th century England even today. Streets that are generally unpaved, rough, dirty, filled with vegetable and animal refuse, without sewers or gutters, but supplied with foul, stagnant pools instead, wrote Engels on the living conditions of the working class in that country. The depths of urban decay in India came to global notice during the pneumonic plague of 1994 in Surat. It epitomized the failure of governments in the post-independence era. and exposed development policies that ignored fundamental public health issues inherited from colonial rule there is little evidence to show that policy makers assimilated the lessons from the surat public health disaster state and municipal governments did not pursue reform in waste management though civic conditions in surat itself underwent change in the plague aftermath during the past decade many cities pursued development agendas often with the help of massive international loans to project modernization at the cost of basic civic reform there is thus a continuing challenge before the current mission to enable and also compel local governments to abide by the provisions of the municipal solid waste management rules by which they are legally bound page 100 post liberalization policies have tended to largely disregard other key factors that affect the quality of life in cities and towns poverty lack of sanitation water shortages gross undersupply of affordable housing and traffic chaos generated by automobile dependence in turn created by neglect of public transport in the absence of a hygienic environment and safe water supply chronic water borne diseases such as cholera and other communicable diseases continue to stalk the poor in the biggest cities It must be sobering to the affluent layers of the population that nearly 14 million Indian households forming 26% of the total in the urban areas do not have a latrine within the house as per the census of India 2001 some 14% have only rudimentary pet facilities the number of households without a drainage connection stands at 11.8 million representing 22.1% of households Migration to cities continues and infrastructure to treat sewage is grossly inadequate to meet the demand even where it exists. It is unlikely that the quality of the urban environment can be dramatically improved therefore if such fundamental questions remain unresolved. Urban transport receives scant attention from policy makers. Policy distortions have led to rising automobile dependency, higher safety risks for road users. and land use plans that are based not on the needs of people but primarily designed to facilitate use of private motorized vehicles it comes as no surprise therefore that pedestrians and bicycle riders who form 30 to 70% of peak hour traffic in most urban centers also make up a large proportion of fatalities in road accidents a paper prepared by the transport research and injury prevention program TRIPP of the Indian Institute of Technology Delhi says pedestrian fatalities in Mumbai and Delhi were nearly 78% and 53% of the total according to recent data compared to 13% and 12% in Germany and the United States such alarming death rates and an equally high injury rate should persuade policy makers to revisit their urban planning strategies and correct the distortions but many cities such as chennai have actually done the reverse reduced footpaths and areas for pedestrian use to facilitate unrestricted use of motorized vehicles 
the practice in progressive world cities has been different. Curitiba in Brazil, which has attracted global attention for innovative urban plans using low-cost technologies, has done everything that Indian policymakers would dread to do. Starting in the 1970s, this provincial center with the highest per capita ownership of cars in Brazil, other than the capital, at the time, banned automobiles from many crowded areas in favor of pedestrians, built an internationally acknowledged bus system that reduced household commuting expenditure to below the national average and created new housing areas that were provided transport links in a planned manner. Some of the prestigious land development in the city, including a new opera house, came up in abandoned sites such as quarries. Page 101 the busway system cut riding time by a third, Scientific American noted in a review in the mid-1990s by providing for advanced ticketing, especially designed boarding areas with wider doors for entry and exit and dedicated lanes for faster transit. In another low-cost initiative, Curitiba managed flirts with a dedication that Mumbai, Bangalore and Chennai can only marvel at. The city created large artificial lakes in suitable places that filled up in the monsoon, avoiding flooding of residential areas. In the summer, these lakes turned into parks to provide recreational spaces. State administrations and urban planning bodies in India follow policies that ironically allow filling of existing wetlands by real estate lobbies, leading to flooding. The residents then demand expensive new storm water drains. Examples such as Curitiba show that inclusive development models for urban renewal are workable if only the state and local governments can be persuaded to adopt a rights-based approach to affordable housing, sanitation, water supply, mobility and a clean environment instead of a market-oriented model that lays excessive emphasis on recovery of costs incurred by profit-oriented private sector service provision. Support from a progressive middle class and trade unions is equally critical to bring about genuine urban renewal. G. Anant Krishnan, The Hindu, 13th December 2005 Activity 1. Notice the italicized sentence placed at the top of the article which tell us at a glance what the article is about. 2. Divide the article into four sections based on the shifts in the subtopics and give a suitable subheading for each section. One has been done for you in the article as an example. 3. Look for pictures in newspapers and magazines that depict the urban civic problems discussed in the text. Cut them out and pin them to the text at appropriate places. 